There are some who would argue that there is no such thing as a perfect tuna taco because tuna don't belong in a taco jack. Even at dedicated seafood places, they are the stepchildren of the menu. But look at, look at what Ralph Gilmore has done. He is one of the undersung heroes of the Austin food scene. I still to this day can't tell you that I have seen a single other tuna taco treated the same way he does, where you take absolutely first-rate ingredients and put them on something as simple as a taco. How you put that blackening spice on it and you sear it, but you maintain its integrity, that's beautiful. You take the first bite, you get that nice tuna taste in there. You're sitting in Austin with tortillas, having sushi-grade tuna. Yes, hell yes. The tortilla is just a platform for your creativity. A taco becomes what you want it to become. I can only appreciate what other people say about it, but I'm not, I'm, I don't, when I say something good about something I've done, it's based on what somebody else said. I'm not gonna sit here and say, I wanna earn it. So I, I don't know how to just say, yes, I've been told many times the best tuna taco, but I don't, I don't know how to say it. Well, until I ate Ralph's tuna taco, I didn't know what a perfect taco was. Really the best tuna taco you're ever gonna eat is that one. To me, it has to be blackened fish. Like you need that spice, that extra heat on there. And uh, flour tortilla and all his fixing on it, to me, hit the spot. You can relax for a second and take a break and have a bite of this thing that's really fresh and tasty and delicious and spicy and yeah, the best version of that thing that you've had. Ralph is larger than life, I've got to tell you. But when you shake his hand, you kind of wonder which life that was. This guy has an element of danger to him. And talk to him just a little bit, and you'll find that this is somebody who's lived a life way outside of the kitchen. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I've, I, I've been real creative, and that's maybe why he's saying it. I've done multiple things from designing homes to designing bikes to opening my first business in oil chain. I, I, I don't know. I, I, li I live a pretty crazy life, but I'm humble, you know, so. I remember thinking that the food truck looked like it had been dredged up from the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico and kind of dragged into town. And there was like seaweeds and mermaids still hanging off of this rust bucket. And you met this guy. When he started talking about his food and its freshness and where he got it and his purveyors and his friends at the Gulf, it didn't sound like a bunch of marketing hooey. It sounded like this dude has had cold beers with a dude that brings in fish from the Gulf maybe two days ago. The beers two days ago, the fish that day probably. And it was really cool to see somebody who gave so few fucks, if I can say that. Who takes a cargo container, cuts the windows out, cuts the floor out, 
puts in the stove, puts it on a trailer, takes it to the middle of Congress Avenue and start cooking fish tacos. Who does that shit? If, if I put all three brothers together, he's probably the smartest one. And he's also probably the dumbest one. And I mean that in the most loving way. You want to talk about a successful restaurant. You, I went down to Jack Allen's Kitchen on a Monday night. It was 45 degrees and raining, and it was packed. I see him slapping people on the shoulders and talking to people at happy hour, and he seems to really know his customers and care. He's the guy who will stop and, and take a selfie with you and that kind of thing. And I love that his personality flavors the restaurants that he's opened, and they have flourished. I run this restaurant like I do running a family and a fatherhood. I don't lose sleep at night caring about the business. I lose sleep at night caring about my staff. Right now we have 425 to 450 employees. And I think they respect that. I think the staff respects it. You know, Jack and Ralph, I think both take populist approaches to serving customers. I think they have a, a similar ethos in terms of sourcing and in terms of caring about farmers and ranchers and fishermen. But Jack obviously has mastered kind of the broad populist appeal. He used to go every day 100 miles an hour. I was more, I'm gonna get there and I'm gonna do it. I'm not in a hurry. We're not competing with each other. We're not trying to outdo each other. By no means is he a chef. By no means am I a chef. I act like one. Son Bryce is a chef. Bryce Gilmore obviously started Odd Duck uh, farmed a trailer and then turned that into Barley Swine, which twice in the past six years was my number one restaurant in the city. All hyper-local, hyper-seasonal, super deserving of a James Beard Award, Best Chef Southwest. You've seen no shortage of writing about Bryce. I mean, once you get in food and wine, you're part of that system. You're gonna have two of your restaurants in the, in the Austin American Statesman's top five. So with everything that's been written about his brother and his nephew, Ralph has been perfectly happy to be off to the side. I hesitate to, to say that he's been in Jack Gilmore or Bryce Gilmore's shadow. And you can either sit in his shadow or you can get the hell out of the way because he's going to do exactly what he wants to do. What a dumbass. You know what I mean? So God bless him for blowing through millions of dollars and God bless him for starting over two or three times. But what he does is first class and incredible. And these fish talkers are off the chain. People said, why would you want to do seafood in a trailer? I'm like, why, why wouldn't you want to? I, I think I'm just part of the keeping Austin cool, man, just keeping Austin weird. If I do what I want to do and people like it, then I'm going to make it. I'm just not going to change to be what somebody else wants me to be. You know, I don't want to say I didn't think he could do it because I had watched the food trailer. I went to the Yelp reviews. I was, I thought they were fake at first. Just five stars across the board. His Yelp reviews were higher than uh, one of the best sushi restaurants in our town with his specials written on cardboard. <laughs> it took over, over a year just to get to where you were breaking even, you know? I was just like, what's taking so long? Everybody at least is so happy. 
The first South By came and like, I knew South By would be good, but I didn't think I was in the right spot for South By. I did 1,700 people a day for 10 days. It was, it was a cash cow, you know? So it's like, I, I believe in myself. I believe in my product. I gotta stay with it. Since Ralph opened and we opened near, you know, near the same time, that was my break, was having Ralph's food. We knew that it was short term, we knew at some point the huge Marriott was coming, and he had been talking about this opportunity to basically buy the kitchen at the Baca Street Bar. I talked to my partner and we really believed in what he was doing in terms of food and people, and we decided to, to take the leap and, and help him have a, a permanent home. I knew I was on the right path when some, a random person on the street stopped me and said, the best thing you ever did for your bars was put Ralph in there. <laughs> his appearance and his expertise on cooking and running a business, they don't mesh together sometimes if you don't know them. You, I don't know, you have an expectation that he's gonna be this kind of guy out of East Texas and <laughs> he's limping around with his bad foot. He's missing his front tooth. He wasn't missing a tooth at this time. That has happened later. People are always like, that's the owner? <laughs> but when he's talking food and he's talking business, he's, he's spot on. I think the way I set it all up is really unique. I started as a trader. I got eight years in it. Now one brick and mortar is already proven. The second brick and mortar is already getting into profit. The third one's not far from profit. And I teamed up with a bar. I know I could sell it for a lot of money. I'm 58 years old. I got three kids and two granddaughters. And I really like to just leave them something, you know? We don't have time to socialize, really. If your restaurant's open 18-hour days, you pretty much work 18-hour days. <laughs> so the only time we really meet up for sure is Christmas or Thanksgiving. Ask Jack for a bread knife. I asked my brother to lend me his lake house, so I'm gonna do some, some seafood and uh, some filet mignons and uh, some lobster tails. and. I'll make some veggies and some potatoes and, and just kind of freestyle it. Yeah. We ought to open a restaurant. Yeah, let's do a breakfast place. Hey, let's do a breakfast place together. That's what we awesome needs. Oh my god. What did Mimo say? Did she say she wanna work at Hooters? I got my mom coming, and I got my oldest daughter, Brooke, coming. Her daughter, my granddaughter, Mercedes, coming. I got my last ex-wife, Desiree, and my daughter, Skyla. My first ex-wife, Wendy, and her daughter, Rihanna, coming. And uh, we all get along. He's an incredible family man. All his kids turn out to be great. Hard workers, smart, just good people. Very humble about it. Man to man. Brother to brother, I respect that. The fact that we share the same last name, I guess means something to some people, but I want to do my own thing. Bryce wanted to do his own thing, and Ralph wanted to do his own thing. Austin is no longer a town where it's just cheese enchiladas, Tex-Mex, and barbecue. We are all of those things that the Gilmores represent as well. And you've got Ralph on one end, and to me, Ralph was part of that wave of doing adventurous culinary experiments and trailers. And then over to Jack, who's somewhere in the middle. He kind of is, he's just right for everybody. Then you've got Bryce, who has been experimenting out on the ragged edge, and it's unusual, it's beautiful to look at. It kind of starts creating Austin as an artistic place to go. These are guys who obviously relate to food. They obviously relate to people and serving people and making people happy. And I think they're helping redefine what Texas cuisine is. 
I'm just doing the same old thing that I've always done, and that's always been my model. I'm one of the only hole-in-the-wall places in Austin left. You know, there's definitely high-rises all around us. There's a 58-story in front of us, condos and motel all around us. But I know I'm not changing. We're going to just keep doing what we do. To me, to have a perfect tuna taco, you have to find the perfect tuna. It's fresh, and it's eight ounce cut steak. You crust that outside of tuna, then you throw it on a hot, hot, hot plate, and just watch it just smoke up and sizzle till you get that crust. Then you flip it to the same thing to the other side, and then when you cut the thing, just you just see all the love inside that, that crusted tuna. So I can't help but have joy.